Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Miss Lucille Ball and Mr. Desi Arnaz in The Red-Headed Woman, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Well, Hap, are you over your cold? Oh, no, Harlow, I still feel run down. Hey, watch your words. We're on for Autolite Stay Full Batteries, remember? And Autolite has done everything to keep these brawny bundles of endless energy from running down. Why, Autolite Stay Full Batteries have extra water reserve above the plates to foil failure from lack of liquid. Need water only three times a year in normal car use. They've even got fiberglass retaining mats at every positive plate for longer battery life. Why, in recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite Stay Full Batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. So, friends, see your Autolite battery dealer and get an Autolite Stay Full battery for your car. You're always right with Autolite. And now, with the red-headed woman and with the performance of Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Jensen Corporation. Hello? Hello, Linda. Yes. Oh, hello, Frank. Oh, look, darling, I thought I told you not to call I know. Me. I shouldn't call you at the office. I'm sorry, Redhead, but I had to talk to you. You see, I... Well, darling, you sound so grim. Is there anything wrong? I... Oh, well, this is going to be tough, Linda, but... You see, I... Well, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but... Well, go on, dear. You can tell me anything. You know that. Oh, you're sure swell, Linda. That's why it's so hard to tell you. I... Frank... You haven't committed a murder or anything, have you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Well, what is it then? Linda, please, I, I tried to tell you last night. I, I know it's hard to justify, but... But what? Frank, you've met someone else, is that it? Yes, Linda. I'm sorry. Oh, it's quite all right. Is she blonde or brunette? Oh, honestly, honey, I... Linda, I couldn't help it. It was one of these things that... It just happens. Sometimes things do. Uh, Well, you don't have to explain, Frank. I'll send your ring back this afternoon. I hope it fits her. Good luck. Tears came, and then I tried to laugh it off. And then I felt myself getting good and mad. What a fool I'd been. For two years, my every thought, my every move had been patterned toward Frank's wishes and welfare. Other girls, the selfish type, were holding their men. It was... Well, I made up my mind that the future would be different. From that minute on, I'd think of myself first, last, and always. Suddenly, I wanted to get away, do things, have beautiful clothes, money. Especially money. I suppose it's the kind of independence any woman wants to grab for in a moment like that. When she's found out you can't depend on a man... Oh, good morning, Glinda. Oh, good morning, Mr. Jensen. Hey. Hey, feeling all right? Of course. Why shouldn't I? Well, I don't know. You just seemed a little despondent. No, I'm fine. Good, good, good. Oh, uh, will you put this away for me? What? Payroll money? Well, it's only the fifth, isn't it? Now, I'm going to Florida for a couple of weeks, Linda. Oh. I drew the payroll money today because I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yes, doesn't it? I've been thinking about it for years. Mm. Say, why don't you take a few days off while I'm gone, Linda? What? Oh. Why don't you, Linda? It's a good idea. Certainly, I won't be needing you. Well, I, I could come in on the 14th and handle the payroll. And... Oh, you needn't bother. I can get Walters. Well, he's t- pretty busy, Mr. Jensen. I'll come back and handle it. I'll just be in the country somewhere close by. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Looking back, I suppose I thought of stealing the payroll right then. I must have, for a few minutes after Mr. Jensen left, I visualized how easy it would be. Only he and I had the combination to the safe. He'd be far away in Florida for two whole weeks. I could leave the next day. I could have at least ten days before anyone could find out anything was wrong. I thought about Frank and that brush-off he'd given me. How easily I might forget him in new surroundings. Well, when I closed the office that evening, 
I took the envelope with $21,000 in bills and stuffed it into my handbag. Then, I don't know why, I took the gun Mr. Jensen always kept in the safe. Next morning, I left Kansas City and began driving west. By the next afternoon, I was well into Texas on the inland route. I knew vaguely that I had to get across the border, but the actual fact that I was a criminal hadn't quite percolated yet. A few miles out of Big Spring, the weather changed, and dark gray clouds replaced the blue skies. Then I came to a roadblock, and I had to detour. It was a winding, makeshift road of dirt that stretched on and on for miles. I hated going so slow, but there wasn't anything I could do about it, so I switched on the radio and tried to feel comfortable and forget what I had done. Then a few drops of rain splashed against the windshield, and I hoped that I'd make the main highway before it really let loose. It was then that I heard the announcement. This afternoon, in one of the most daring daylight holdups in Texas history, the Seventh Bank of Abilene was robbed of $40,000. As far as is known, only two persons participated. A tall, dark-complexioned young man wearing a light gray suit and hat and an attractive red-haired woman dressed in a green suit. In effecting their successful getaway, one of them shot and critically wounded an elderly bank guard, a veteran of World War I. The couple left in a green panel truck and are believed headed in the general direction of El Paso. More news after our next music. Well, these were worse criminals than I was by far, and they'd made a getaway. I shut off the radio. To my right, black letters loomed suddenly against the yellow background of a sign. Midland, Odessa, Pecos. I slowed down to 30, rounding a series of blind curves. Coming around the last one, I saw a man standing in the middle of the road. I jammed down my brakes to keep from hitting him. He started walking toward me. I'm very sorry to bother you this way, but my car is out of gas, and I was wondering, could you perhaps let me siphon a little from your tank? Well, sorry, but I'm low myself. Oh, please, don't be like that. I've been waiting here for hours. You're the first car I've seen. I would just take a little. Well, I can't. Honestly, I... All right, all right. Then perhaps you would be so kind as to give me a little lift to the next gas station? Well... Oh, come on now. Don't you believe in the good neighbor policy? Well, uh... <laughs> all right. Get in. Thanks. Thanks a lot. We'll find a gas station right on here someplace. I, I won't even take you out of your way. Oh, that's all right. I'm going in the general direction of... of, uh... El Paso? El Paso. It all came together suddenly. The radio announcement and this man who was just sitting down beside me. He fitted perfectly. Dark complexion, light gray suit. I glanced at the car parked by the side of the road. Yes, it was a green panel truck. Well, senorita? Uh, look, I'm terribly sorry, but I don't think I can take you after all. You see, I... Oh, have... now, please, I have been marooned here for two hours. It's very important that I get to Pecos in the next two hours. Oh, and where are you going after that? Me? <laughs> I'm going to travel all over. After Pecos, I'm going to beat it down to Juarez. That's across the border. From there, yeah, we're going... Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, I would like to pay you for helping me drew a sheaf of new bills from his pocket and dropped a fresh 20 into my lap. I opened my handbag and my fingers closed around Mr. Jensen's gun. He looked down at it. Hey, what? I said I've changed my mind. Okay, okay. That's the way you feel. I don't argue with a girl who's got a gun. I didn't even wait for him to close the door. I let out the clutch, stepped on the gas, and got away fast. When I finally reached the highway, I speeded up still more. I'd had a bad scare. I wanted to talk to someone about anything and forget that man. Maybe that was why I was so relieved when I came to the little town of Pecos and saw the carnival a short distance ahead and why I stopped to look at it. Even from the car, the bright lights and the people and the carousel, gaily painted horses going round and round made me feel less lonely. I wanted to get out and mingle with the people and drink some pink lemonade and buy a red candied apple. Go in one of the midway tents and see Tortoro, the sword swallower, and Lopez, the ventriloquist. But instead, I ate a hot dog in the car and bought a silver ashtray from a little Indian girl. Then a sudden burst of thunder reminded me of the approaching storm. I started the car and left the carnival behind me. Soon afterwards, it began to rain. 
Then a cloud burst hit. Fifteen minutes later, I spotted an auto court. As I came to a stop, a gray mustached man in a rubber hat and raincoat came out to meet me. Hello, how far to El Paso, please? Not planning to go there tonight, are you? Well, oh, I... Oh, you never make it. A lot of bad spots in the road. I know because in rainy nights, I always pick up a lot of money pulling stall cars out of the mud. Well, maybe I'd better spend the night here, then, if you have a vacancy. Well, I've got more vacancies than anything else. I'll fix you up with the best cabin on the place. I used to live in it myself. Come on, I'll show you. It's uh, number three. Oh, it sounds fine. Do you mind if I use your phone first? No, go ahead. Go ahead. There's a booth over there right next to the office. Thank you. Yeah, I'll open the cabin door and leave the key on the dresser. You can put your car in the shed there. I was going to phone the El Paso police and tell them where I'd last seen the man answering the description of the Abilene bank robber. I dialed and waited for her to answer. Operator? And then I remembered something. There should have been a woman, too. A woman with red hair, but the man had been alone. Operator? After all, there was more than one green truck in the world. More than one dark young man. Operator? And besides, I thought with a shock, I'm in no position to risk their maybe tracing the call and finding out my name and investigating me. I hung up the receiver. I went out and wheedled a cup of coffee and a donut out of my host. And then I went up to my cabin and went to bed. I woke up about 10 o'clock. A car had driven up and stopped right outside my window. And the headlights were shining in. When I got up to pull down the shade, I saw the car. It was the green panel truck I'd seen on the road. And this time, a woman was in the front seat. Then the proprietor and the other man came out of the cabin next to mine. Right, I lowered my shade and then listened to I'll wait till the storm is over, and then I'll go on to El Paso. Is it all right if I leave my truck out here? Oh, sure. There's a garage in back if you want to use it. No, thanks. I'll just park it here near to the door. I heard him enter his cabin. I locked my door and sat down on the bed. It was very quiet next door. Finally, I guess I must have dozed off. But then, all of a sudden, I was awake again. Voices, a man's and a woman's, were coming from the cabin next door. I got up, opened my window very quietly, and listened. Possibly, Monty, and it's mine, Jose. I don't think you had better forget that. If you do, you will be sorry, very sorry. You are wrong, Carmencita. It will not be me who is sorry. What do you mean? It shouldn't be difficult for you to figure that out. You mean? <laughs> oh, but that is so funny. You couldn't get along without me. No, not even for one week. Not one week. <laughs> I would not laugh if I were you, Carmen. <laughs> Wait, Jose. Don't do it. You're just trying to be funny. No, you must... Don't do it. Jose, no. Please, don't. After that, everything was quiet. I was stunned, frozen. Then I heard his door open. I hurried to my window and carefully raised the shade a few inches. It was quite dark, and at first I could only hear his footsteps. And then I saw him. He snapped on a flashlight, looked around with it. He was carrying a roll of blankets, and he put it down carefully in the wet grass. Then he opened the rear door of the green panel truck. There was a long, oblong box on the floor. He stooped over and lifted what I thought was the roll of blankets. But I was wrong. From one end, a head was visible. A woman's head with red hair. I must have thrown up my hands and hit the window shade. It clattered to the top. In the tense silence of the night, it sounded like a machine gun. The man outside spun around. Huh? He trained his flashlight on me. He took a long look. Then he turned around and dropped his gruesome bundle into the long box. When I turned away, I couldn't look anymore. Finally, I heard him walk toward his cabin, go inside and shut the door. Then I took a chance. I threw on my raincoat and shoes and hurried to the proprietor's office. I heard I knocked on his door and called to him. There was no answer. So I wrote a quick note and slipped it under his door and hurried back to my cabin. I closed my door and was just fumbling with the key when the lights went on. No use to lock it now, senorita, and don't make a noise. He was sitting in a chair, smiling, casually pointing a gun at me, my gun that I'd foolishly left on the dresser. <laughs> You were not so very smart, were you, sweetheart? This gun, it looks nice. 
I think you handle it good, too. I almost found out this afternoon on the road, didn't I? Now, look, I, I, I wasn't going to use it, honestly, but, well, you know, you, you read a lot in the papers about the trouble people get into picking up strangers, and yes, I... Yes, yes, sure, sure. You're always careful. Stay out of trouble. Mind your own business. That is very good to remember, well, senorita. That, that's all I was doing. Well, what do you want with me? It's just too bad you looked out on me just now. I wouldn't have known you were here. I didn't mean to spy on you. I was awake, and when I heard a noise outside, I, I looked out. That's all. That was natural, wasn't it? Maybe, but it didn't turn out so good for you, did it? Come on now. We're getting out of here, and you are coming with me. But where, where are we going? Just places, senorita. Just places. Come on now. But what do you want with me? You, you don't want me. Don't want you? <laughs> Why, I'm crazy for you. I've been looking for you. I've been looking for somebody just like you. Autolite is bringing you Miss Lucille Ball and Mr. Desi Arnaz in The Red-Headed Woman, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Feeling better, Hap? No, Harlow. I think I'll take the vacation my doctor advised. Decided where you'll go? Not yet. Well, how about the Atlantic Ocean? Or the Great Lakes? Or the Mississippi River? Say, that's a lot of water. Right. It'll remind you of Autolite Stay Full batteries, that they have longer and larger liquid reserve above the plates as compared to ordinary batteries. Need water only three times a year in normal car use. Or, hey, better still, Hap, visit the zoo. See the camels. Tell them Wilcox sent you. What? And get tossed out on my ear for su suggesting that Autolite stay-full batteries can go without water longer than camels can? Well, tell them about those fiberglass retaining mats protecting every positive plate for longer battery life. Tell them that in recent tests based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite stay-full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without stay-full features. Well, wherever you go, Hap, take along an Autolite stay-full battery. You're always right. With Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our stars Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball in The Red-Headed Woman, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. It was quite a moment. Jose motioned with a gun for me to pick up my suitcase. And right then, the door opened and the proprietor came in. I got your note, Miss. Well, what's all this? What's the gun for, mister? Oh, it uh, um, belongs to the lady. She was just showing it to me. Oh, yeah? Wh well, yes. Yes, that's right. I'll take it back now. This man bothering you, miss? Is that why you left the note? No, I was... I remembered my position again. I thought of the 21,000 in my handbag. I wanted this murderer locked up, but I didn't want to risk too much investigation. I wasn't bothering her. No, no, I just thought I heard someone at the window. And when I couldn't find you, I went next door, and this uh, gentleman was kind enough to... Well, yeah, I guess I owe you an apology, mister, but then when I saw you with a gun... It's okay, it's okay, forget it. Forget it, amigo. Sure. Well, good night. All right, you, you stand over there. Well, I guess you must be crazy for me, eh? To lie for me like you did? No, I'm just fond of myself. Things have kind of changed, haven't they, Jose? Oh, you know my name, too. And I know all about you. Really? Yes, I guess things have changed. All right, now. That was a good idea you had before about leaving here. Come on, pick up my suitcase. Yes, ma'am. Where are we going? Like you said, places, Jose. Just places. Now walk quietly. My car's right outside. Anything you say, senorita. He drove while I held the gun. After we'd gone about five miles, we came to a side road. I told him to turn. It's a pretty deserted neighborhood, no? Yes. Please tell me, where are we going? Oh, you're not going very far. You know, I wish you didn't make me leave my truck back there. Oh, you're worried about what's in that pile of blankets, huh? Yes, that's right. Somebody might find her. Senorita, please. Not a chance. 
Oh, look, now, uh, why don't we talk this thing over? I think maybe we could. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not buying a thing. Well, I certainly hope you know what you're doing. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, but we're stuck in the mud. Oh, well, that's a very fancy trick, but it won't work. You don't believe me? No. Well, then get out and see for yourself. And have you drive off and leave me? Oh, no, thanks. Come on, start the car. But I'm telling you the truth. We're stuck in this ditch. You better start the car, mister. Okay, okay. Anything you say. You see? Try it again. All right, but it'll only get us in deeper. What do we do next? <laughs> You're running the show. You tell me. Okay, I'll tell you. Get out of the car. What do I do now? Pick up some broken branches and put them under the wheels. Like I said, you are running the show. No, no, never mind. It's too dark. I can't see you. Get back in the car here. But you give up too easy. Why don't you think of using a flashlight? I don't have one. Well, maybe if you ask me real nice, I will let you use mine. Where is it? It's here, in my coat pocket. All right, senorita, drop the gun. Quickly. It was over in a second. Before I knew it, he'd reached in his pocket and jumped behind me. I'd forgotten the most important thing of all. I hadn't searched it. I could feel the gun against my back. <laughs> now you're going to get into the car. Hurry. Yes, sir. Now you will drive for a while, no? But I thought we were stuck. That is exactly what I wanted you to think. Good, eh? Start a car. Do you know, senorita, you should have searched me before we started. Yes, I've already figured that out. Yeah. But this whole thing is kind of new to me. Oh, come on. Let's quit the kidding. You know, I think you would have been very surprised if you would have searched me. You know why? Nothing would surprise me. Oh, I think so. Because you wouldn't have found any gun. Only this. A flashlight. <laughs> it feels very much like a gun against your back, doesn't it? Especially when you're very frightened. Look, let me go. I swear I'll never bother you again. You won't bother me. Not where you're going. You won't bother anyone. Drive a little faster, please. I drove for several miles without saying a word. Then I took a chance. I speeded up to 60, then jammed the brake to the floor. Oh! Oh! Jose's head banged against the windshield. He dropped the gun. I grabbed it almost before it hit the floorboard. Now, out again, Mr. Finnegan. We're going to change seats. Oh, my head. That was very smart, baby. Very smart. Almost as good as your flashlight gun trick, hmm? It's better. Your trick wins. Oh, well. What cooks now? We're heading straight into El Paso Police Department. But, 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 baby, you can't do that. Why can't I? Because it's too foolish. And the senorita is not a fool. No, the senorita isn't. That's why you're driving straight to El Paso and the police. Yes, ma'am. Whatever you say. I certainly hope you know what you're doing. Now, the senorita has learned a lot in the last few hours. Drive carefully. He shrugged his shoulders and settled back behind the wheel. I decided I'd been needlessly concerned about the police. After all, no one knew I had the $21,000 in my handbag. No one even knew it was missing. When I handed the police the man they were looking for, they wouldn't bother about me. They would accept my statement that I was just a secretary on my way to Mexico for a vacation. As we entered the outskirts of El Paso, I switched on the radio and settled back to enjoy it. And now, our Texas roundup of the latest Texas news. Texans who expect quick and speedy action when it comes to lawbreakers in our state won't be disappointed when they hear the outcome of the bank holdup and killing of a guard in Abilene two days ago. What? What's that? Be quiet, two be quiet, culprits, listen. Manuel Milani, a non-Texan, and Betty Murphy, a red-haired Californian, were apprehended today in Big Spring, only 61 hours after their spectacular holdup of the 7th Bank of Abilene both freely confessed to the crime, the bravery of our Texas... Hey, wait a minute. You wait a minute. Stop the car. Now, I don't believe it. Neither do I. You don't. 
All right, then. Who was it you killed? Me? I didn't kill anybody. Oh, stop it. It was your, your accomplice. I heard the argument, and then you killed her, and then you... Oh, you're crazy. What do you mean, I'm crazy? Right this minute, there's a red-haired woman dead in the back of your truck. What the... Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a good one. You know, you're right. You did hear an argument, and you did see me put a red-haired woman in the trunk. She was dead. Yes, that's right. She has been dead all her life. She's... <laughs> the argument, as you say you heard, went something like this. <clears throat> Half of the money, it is mine, Jose. I don't think you had better forget that. If you do, you will be sorry, very sorry. You are wrong, Carmencita. I will not be me that is sorry. You couldn't get by without me. No, not even for one week. Not one week. <laughs> for heaven's sake. A ventriloquist. What do you mean, a ventriloquist? I am the best. Jose Lopez, the great. Oh, what a relief. Yeah, your relief? What about me? I thought the whole time, here I am traveling with a criminal. Me? How could you think that I was a criminal? Why not? You got the red hair, you're wearing the green suit, just like the description. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, listen, there's <laughs> only one other thing that is confusing me. What's that? How come you carry such a big bankroll, all these thousands of dollars in your purse? Well, I, uh... Yes? Well, you... Oh, what's the use? I might as well tell you the whole story. <laughs> You know, I found myself doing it, and Jose explained to me how silly I'd been to ever try such a thing. And then it struck us that it was still only the 13th of the month. So we drove back to Kansas City together. I put the money back, and the payroll went off just like it always does. And oh, that Jose, he's so cute and so wonderful. Hey, baby, come on, hurry up with that dinner, will Yes, you? Jose, dear. And what are we going to eat tonight, baby? And it better be something good, you know. A husband can testify against his wife. <laughs> Same as usual, amigo, baby. Enchiladas with tacos and hot sauce. Yum, yum, Chili yum. with tamales. Mm. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's stars, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Lucille, I heard your radio show last Friday night. Like it? Sure, swell show. Mind if I got in? Of course not, Desi. I warn you, Desi. Harlow will try to sell you an Autolite stay full battery. <laughs> oh, me, I'm sold already. That's just what I was going to tell Harlow. His product is terrific. Why, thanks, Desi and Lucille. Autolite stay full batteries are, as Desi says, terrific. They need water only three times a year in normal car use. Yes, sir, their extra liquid load above the plates as compared to ordinary batteries helps lick a leading cause of battery failure. Autolite Stay Full batteries are just one of more than 400 products Autolite makes for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars and trucks. Batteries, spark plugs, coils, distributors, starting motors, bullseye sealed beam headlight units. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, folks, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, Burt Lancaster will be our star. The play is called The Long Wait, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Red-Headed Woman is an original play by Nancy J. Cleveland. Lucille Ball will soon be seen, co-starred with Bob Hope in the Paramount picture Fancy Pants and may be heard in her own Jell-O show, My Favorite Husband, every Friday night over most of these same CBS stations. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Burt Lancaster, Mickey Rooney, and Lana Turner. And don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Burt Lancaster. You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night.
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.